Peace to the saints. This topic will be engaging because it's about a public figure, a major figure, both Michelle Obama and Barack Obama. And it'll also be very instructive because Michelle Obama, though she might appear to be a black woman, she really just represents the modern woman as ethnicity, culture, and race has really broken down in terms of what it means. We're dealing with the same woman, no matter what color she is, what country she's from, it's the same woman unless she happens to have been raised with some values, which is improbable, not impossible. And I'm going to give some instruction that hopefully parents can use to bless their children with a little bit of ism, but I'm gonna play this clip for you and you're gonna to get to hear it from the sis mouth. And it's quite a pity to hear what she said because you have to ask yourself, gee, if Barack Obama can't keep his in line and he was the leader of the free world, oh, I don't stand a chance. It's a pity. Now let's go ahead and get to this. He is, and, and it's amazing to me how much women nowadays don't know how to play the back. They gotta be front and center. And that's a lot of what we're about to learn. The nature of the modern woman is to not only be a narcissist, but to be in competition with her man such that she can outshine him in her, in her thirst for constant attention and validation. Oh, it's a cold, sad, sad thing. Here we go. People think I'm being catty by saying this. It's like there were 10 years. First off, look at that quotation. I couldn't stand my husband. And she's media trained. She should know better than that. To say something like that, you already know that's going to be the headline. And what a headline it is. But civilized people, we know that we don't speak ill of our loved ones in the public sphere. Uh, in fact, we don't even speak ill of our loved ones to others whom we know personally and have conversation with interpersonally. It's very tacky to do such a thing. And what's worse is she thinks she's being a shero and leading the way and exposing that it's okay to be critical of your spouse. Look at here. Look at here. It's not okay. I don't care if you're the man or the woman in the relationship. You should keep your private affairs private. But as she goes through and explains when she began to not be able to stand Barack Obama, yeah, the former president, the guy they call the first black president, they also call him the first gay president. When she explained that, we need to take some notes and do some analysis of her psyche for it is very instructive. And if we can start to educate our boy and girl children better, we will not see this kind of problem pop up in the future as much. Hef.com writes Marquette, if the woman you are dealing with is not your greatest cheerleader, would you cut her off completely or put her on limited association? I'd go for the limited association because she may have other values that she brings to the table. Often you find those who are not able to be a major supporter of yours it's not because they don't believe in you. It might be because they don't believe in themselves. You know, they weren't raised very well. They have low self-esteem and that might be crippling their ability to be a proper supporter to you. Doesn't mean they're a bad person or completely useless. And for that reason, you should get out of her what is there. And obviously support ain't there, but there may be some other value. So I put her on limited association, but surely she ain't the one. We know that much, right? Shout out to Joseph. Appreciate it. Carrying on. You caught up? Yeah. Fantastic. And in, in a second, do let us know who joined the family at patreon.com slash the saint in the center. And we have our new member orientation coming up as well as all saints meetings. Uh, and then you'll get access to the discord. So this will be great. I always love the beginning of the month growing this family. Shout yes. out to Brad. He writes peace to the saints. Um, some of the new members are Mitchell. We'll call Shout out to Mitchell. Now, an emperor family of Anthony joined again. We have Vicente, who mentioned that he Yes, joined. indeed. Ruben. Shout out. Gage. Okay. INTJ. All right, all right. And Dante. And Dante, welcome all of you to this thing of ours, to this family. And may all the saints welcome you warmly. Here we go. Here's why well, I couldn't stand my husband. <laughs> Michelle Obama okay. is getting candid about love and marriage. Candid. The former first lady doesn't hold back during a December panel. First off, why is she wearing box braids? Just like 
like personally, I like box braids. I ain't gonna lie to you. I like box braids. It reminds me when I was in middle school, you know, the little, the pretty little brown skinned black girls, they had a box braids, but you're like 55 or probably older than that. What are you doing with box braids? Grow up. No, for real though, grow up. Carrying on. With Revolt TV when talking about her relationship with her husband. And see, this is a, a good representation of the dynamic, shall we say the power dynamic, in fact, you can tell who's the senior partner or the more powerful partner. And I don't say this in the LGBTQ sense of partner, but rather like component is what I mean. You can tell who's the more powerful component in the pairing by him leaning into her as though she's the center of the photograph, which is quite comical because you would think if you've been president of the most powerful nation on earth, you might feel like you're the most powerful person. And whether you feel it or not, you are. Because truth be told, if we said, hey, guys, we have two stadiums. You can go to this stadium and hear Michelle Obama, or you can go to this stadium and hear Barack Obama. I'm pretty sure if you had to pick one, his stadium is going to have more people. Because ah, truth be told, we wouldn't even know who she is if it wasn't for him. And sadly, you have a lot of folks get delusional. I believe Jay-Z had a phenomenal quotation with regards to Dame Dash. And let's say in this metaphor, she's Dame Dash. He says, he, Jay-Z calls himself Hove or Hova. He said, I heard folks say they made Hove. Okay, so make another Hove, which is to say, oh, you made me? I became president because of you. I couldn't have did it on my own without you. Go get with another man. Make him president too. Show me, show me your superpowers. Which is to say, nah, I became president because of me. Whether you were you or you were there or not, I was destined, okay? But often they get this delusion into thinking that a great man was great because they made him great, which is not the case. You might have assisted, but a great man knows how to put things in play, you dig? A great man would have put somebody else in play if he wasn't ready to, you know, hop up off the bench and get after it. Huh? Now, here's the funny thing. Barack Obama is a, a very feminine character. That's why we welcome Trump after him, right? We, we wanted some masculinity back in the world. Uh, and that's why you see him like hovering over her, all looking all skinny and frail. Man, I I'm going to go out on a limb. She might weigh more than him because she looking fairly solid, solid. End of 30 years, Michelle reveals things with Barack weren't always picture perfect. <sighs> especially for about a decade. And I Let me just go back to that photo right there. Aren't always picture You need to sit down and be respectful. And I'm going to tell you why. In my personal opinion, look, in my personal opinion, he looks like a better looking woman than she does. Yeah, in this photo right here, if I just took her wig off and put her wig on him, I think I'd rather slay him. Uh, pause. But she's not the best looking woman out there. And now she got this big mouth. I'm going to go ahead and say that's strike one, strike two. She's skating on thin ice as far as I'm concerned. That ice about to break and she's going to drown. She needs to keep it cool, for real. Though. Perfect. Especially for about a decade. And I people think I'm being catty by saying this. It's like there were 10 years when I couldn't stand my husband. There were 10 years when I couldn't stand my husband first off like, 10 years, that's a long time. Number two, I can't stand to, if, if you can't stand someone, that, that's very strong. You might say we had 10 years where we were establishing a foundation, or you just might not speak about it because it ain't people business. But I to not be able to stand someone, you don't want to be in the same room. You don't want to breathe the same air. You don't want to look at them. You don't want to hear them breathing. That is a strong thing. And it's not only does it speak poorly of her husband and his leadership in their family. And we know his leadership in their family has been not very good because while he was present, I recall there was that video of one of his daughters twerking, looking like a real slore. It's like, why would you have all of this social status, wealth and position and you want to twerk like a low class harlot from Baltimore or Compton or Chicago? They call it juking over there. You did or any ghetto you want to name. Why do that? Well, Daddy ain't teach you no better. I don't blame you, young blood. I blame your old heads. Now, this broad is over here saying for 10 years, I couldn't stand him. And the funny thing, too, is she's just an Aisha Curry type. Yeah, she's an Aisha Curry, which is to say she's in the shadow of her husband, who's actually talented. And in her effort to usurp his authority and his limelight, rather than being a part of it in family, her effort is to usurp, uh, usurp the authority and bring it to her only selfishly. 
you know, she has to put him down a little bit. You dig? Just the same way Aisha Curry was saying, oh, like, you know, everyone's always talking about Steph. What about me? What about you? You got a fat face and you had like a couple kids. You ain't attractive no more, shorty. He's still in the NBA hitting swishers from like half court. What have you been doing? And uh, you, yeah, yeah, the big one in the purple. The big one in the purple. I ain't talking about Barney. The big one in the purple. What have you been contributing to humankind that you are over here degrading someone who led the free world? What have you contributed? Oh, and you're degrading him as though he's your enemy when it turns out he is your life partner, as you would call it as a liberal. Wow, that's who you decide to drag through the dirt? Come on.